Have you ever finished building a computer or just moved around some drives and ended up seeing this screen? The no boot device found error screen can be caused by a variety of things, but today I'm gonna to help you try to solve some of them. Now, some of these solutions may be a little bit more complicated, but ease us, the partition master can help make some of these a lot easier. So first, let's explain some reasons as to why this may be happening. It could be caused by a corrupted hard disk partition, incorrect boot order in BIOS, corrupt or damaged boot files, a damaged or missing master boot record on the bootable disk, connection problems, and other external causes like malware, viruses, third-party system protected software, etc. Now we're gonna start off with the most simple solutions first, and then we'll graduate to the more complex ones. Hopefully before you get to the very end, you will have a solution. And the easiest thing to do is just to check the connections of your drives, whether they are an M.2 form factor or something like a three and a half or two and a half inch drive. Go ahead and reseat all of your connections on those drives. With an M.2, you're just gonna pull it out of the slot and put it back in. With the two and a half and three and a half inch drives, you're just going to go ahead and unplug both the power and the data cables and then plug those back in. Make sure that they're seated nicely. Now our next set of solutions are all gonna be within the BIOS. So let's go ahead and get into the BIOS first. If you don't know how to get into your BIOS, go ahead and boot your PC. You will eventually see a screen like this. You're gonna go ahead and press the key that it designates as your button to get into your BIOS and you should be met with your BIOS screen. Now BIOS screens are gonna be very different across different manufacturers, as well as different ranges within those motherboards. So some of these settings, you may have to go ahead and use a search engine to figure out where exactly these settings are in your particular BIOS. The first one that we wanna check is the one of the easiest is just checking our boot order. And as we can see here, our boot options are incorrect. If I go ahead and select our boot option one, typically your motherboard will show you which one has the boot manager on it by saying Windows Boot Manager or something along those lines before the manufacturer name. So as we can see here, I have an Oracle, but I also have a Windows Boot Manager Oracle. We'll know that that is the correct drive to, to choose. We're gonna go ahead and select that. Now, if your BIOS does not mention Windows Boot Manager, but you know that your drives do have it, go ahead and try the different options within your boot options and see which one your system will boot from. Now, if that doesn't work and maybe you have changed some of BIOS settings in the past, a really good idea is just to set your BIOS back to its default settings. And again, this location is gonna be entirely dependent on your board manufacturer and the board range that you're using. But for us, it is gonna be in our save and exit section here and it's called load optimized defaults. This one is going to reset the motherboard to its default settings. Now, if your BIOS boot mode, which would either be UEFI or legacy does not match your system's installation mode, it should be changed. Most modern systems will use UEFI, but if you're using an older OS or something that's not compatible with UEFI, you're gonna have to change that to the other option. So for us, it's going to be here. It's called storage boot option control. The name for this is gonna vary across motherboard manufacturers. Well, we would go ahead and select this and change this to legacy only. And then we can go ahead and press our F10 to save and exit. Now, if you're using an MBR partition drive or again, an older operating system, you may need to enable CSM support for your legacy BIOS boot mode. And for us here, it is just above. You just go ahead and make sure that your CSM support is listed as enabled. Most motherboards by default will have this enabled, but some will have it disabled make sure it's turned on. Now, if none of those solutions helped fix your problem, we're gonna go ahead to the more complicated step of rebuilding your master boot record, and we're gonna use EaseUs Partition Master to do that. So what you're gonna need is a USB, and if you cannot boot into your computer, some other computer in order to create the bootable USB that we're gonna be using to repair our master boot record. Now, once you have your USB, you're gonna head into EaseUs Partition Master, and we're gonna go ahead and go to bootable media. From here, we're gonna do create bootable media. We're gonna go to next. We're gonna select our USB drive, create, and we will wait for that process to finish. Now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and head back into our BIOS as the pop-up window here tells us to. 
So once you get into your BIOS, you're gonna head back to your boot and we're going to make sure that we change our boot option number one to be the UEFI on the new USB that you did. So we're gonna go ahead and choose our Lexar USB flash drive there. And we're just gonna press F10 to reboot into the USB. And when it reboots, it should automatically open Partition Master WinPE edition. And you'll be in this EaseUs Partition Master Windows PE environment. If it doesn't automatically launch it, you can just go ahead and open it from here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to Toolkit, Rebuild MBR, and we're gonna make sure that we choose the right disk. So this is our Oracle disk. We're gonna go ahead and press Rebuild. And now all we have to do is go back into our BIOS and make sure that we're booting from the correct drive. So we're gonna go back to our boot settings. We're gonna to go to our Oracle and we're gonna go ahead and press F10 and boot back into Windows. And we were able to get back into Windows. So hopefully that ends up fixing your problem. Now you may have noticed in the last solution that our boot options had changed. And that is because I had changed my boot drive from a GPT to an MBR drive. Now MBR, is typically reserved for older OS systems. And if you have something like Windows 10 or Windows 11, you should be using a GPT drive. Partition Master can also go ahead and convert an MBR to a GPT drive. And that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. So we have our drive here, it's MBR. We're gonna go ahead and go to disk converter to MBR to GPT. We're gonna press next. We're going to select our drive here. We're gonna press convert. And it's gonna ask us, do you want to continue? Your computer needs to restart to complete the operation. We're gonna go ahead and press yes. And once you get to the screen, let it do its thing and we will be back once it's all finished. Once you get to the screen where it mentions that the batch operations processed successfully, we're gonna go ahead and press enter to restart and it should go ahead and do that for us. And now we can see that our drive has been converted back to a GPT drive, which means we should be all good to go. The no boot device error can be quite frustrating, but hopefully some of the solutions in this video helped you out. If it did, we'd really love to know down in the comments, as well as if you have any questions or need some further clarification, please leave them down in the comments and we will be happy to lend a hand.